I'm back. So I'm here with Christian Kramer. He was the assistant director for Paul the Last Apostle and the associate producer. Uh, so Christian, thanks again for your time. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's my right. pleasure, Ruben. So uh, Christian, so when you first you, when you first heard about Paul the Last Apostle, you came a bit different than everybody else. Uh, I actually approached you in a, on another film set, and I mentioned, "Hey, do you want to be my director?" And you said, "I said no. I wasn't ready for it at the time." <laughs> And uh, so, but you were, were you intrigued by the project or what was your initial response? Uh, my initial response for getting offered to do Paul the Last Apostle was I was really intrigued because when you think about it, I mean, there's definitely more of a rise in a lot of faith-based media, but, I, and you see a lot of depictions of Jesus, but we don't have as much stuff about Paul who, I mean, he's written over two thirds of the New Testament. So it was a project that greatly intrigued me and also having someone as reliable as Reuben coming to me with this project had me very interested. So yes, originally he did offer for me to be the director of the project, but I'm still a bit more newer in my in my career. So I knew that like I wasn't ready for it. But um, then after that, he offered me to be the role of first AD, which the first, um, what I've been doing in my career has been more, you know, PA and key set, second, second or AD, kind of more in that field. So that was something more when he offered me that I was like, this is something where I feel like I'm ready for this. And I'm still newer, but I was ready to take on the challenge. And by the way, Christian did an amazing job as assistant director. So that's definitely his forte. And uh, eventually to be director, to be honest, I think he just, he, he was really, uh, again, very reliable. I could really re know exactly what's going to happen. Uh, he he kind of led the, the ship, I would say, as, as other people, other assistant directors have said, they're pretty much the boss. And so you, you took on that mantle, even at a young age. Uh, I thought it was older. <laughs> Most people do. But uh but again, so this is a huge responsibility. So now uh, you, you, you said yes. Uh, we then showed you the script. What was your, <laughs> as, you, as you saw the script, as you're building out the plan, what was your steps that you went through? Uh, my initial thoughts on the script were I was really intrigued by the project because it's not only just Paul, but it's also, you know, giving some characterization to him, adding some other stories, and then also having that window with Priscilla and Aquila, which is also a good vessel to show not only just Paul, but, you know, some of the people he interacts with on his journey. So it really intrigued me and I was really excited for the project. And also, I mean, like other stuff, I don't know how much we can get into spoilers for this project or not, but I mean, not too much, not too much, not too much. <laughs> so no spoilers, but I'm mean, definitely, I mean, like, especially just like the opening scene, it just really starts off with a great bang just to really get you involved with it. And then just really showing the characterization of everyone while still being faithful to the source material and uh, their personal lives as well. I see that you you mentioned his favorite character was that that was Akilla. Uh, who who played Akilla? I, I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember at the time. He probably, wasn't that good an actor. Yeah, probably the best actor actually. I think that was me. Yeah. So thank you for mentioning that. Um, so anyway, uh, so now so now you're going. You've been in Full Wheel before, right? Right. So, so uh, as you're going the first day, you know, you're we're doing pre production. Uh, what was going through your mind as you're going to to set now to begin this work? Um, it was really interesting for me because I filmed a lot of stuff at a Capernaum Studios where we did shoot Paul. So it was interesting seeing it just coming yeah, more from generally I'm more a bit more below the line, more just PA and key set. So it was interesting to see like how we were going to be able to tackle this project matter. And it was really a surreal moment that first day when we were setting everything up, getting the cameras ready, and I was realizing just like, oh wait, we're actually making a show here. This isn't just like something where like I was just on my computer scheduling, you know, and just like, hey, this scene would be better this day. This scene would be more cost efficient and better for the actors time or anything to actually when we got to shoot that and then realizing like, oh yeah, we, we actually have something good on our hands here. And it, it's interesting because part of, part of the role of an assistant director is to look at scheduling, uh, even if it means removing different scenes or different shots. Uh, there was a shot you removed that I think I was a part of. But yet he had no problem doing that, which, again, showed me his integrity. It didn't matter that it was even me that the shot was removed because of time. Because, again, we, we have to make sure that cast and crew have enough time. And that's important for you as well. Right, right. One of the main goals of a first AD is to try to maximize time. For example, we have with film, it's an industry standard of 12 hour days. So my one of my main goals was to 
get all of the scenes that we had scheduled for the day and get enough coverage of everything to where when we get into the edit, we can still make a good coherent cut of everything. And then two, to make sure we don't go too over because like, you know, 12 hours is what standard what's expected. It's once you get to like, especially in a lot of other indie shows, once you get to like 13, 14, even 15 hours, that's when you start to get a more cranky crew that starts to affect morale. And then also like, once you get to like the 16 hour point, it's kind of like a lot of people get to be like, why are we doing this? And that really affects morale. So one of my main, my two main goals were just to make sure we got all the shots we needed so that when we get into the editing where we're not just like, oh, we're missing this big dramatic scene, we might miss one or two angles for there, but that's, you know, always something like time. Like, let's say, you know, like there's one scene that's more emotional or something like that. I try to schedule something like that at the beginning of the day so that way we can get all the shots. So then, you know, if we're doing something at the end of the day that's more like a pickup shot or an insert, you know, it's not as big a deal if we're losing like a shot of like some people just in the background talking about something over like um, one of the more emotional parts of the story, which, you know, you need to have those shots of like a tight on every single person's face and a wide and a master. So that way, when you get into it, those more emotional scenes need more time. Where those other scenes were, it's not that they're not important, but there's some scenes that are more important than others. So that's one of the main things is just scheduling everything for there. And if we have to lose one shot from one scene to make the entire day and get the rest of the scenes, that's a sacrifice that we have to make, but it's important to know which ones are the right decisions we have to do for chatting. So you mentioned a lot of different scenes. You meant emotional ones, non-emotional ones. Was there, before you went on set, you have an, was there an expectation you had of a scene that we are gonna film um, that you were looking forward to? Expectations, uh, one of my favorite scenes was uh, this one scene we had in the synagogue, because we have this one scene where, I can't spoil too much, but let's just say there's a, an angry mob and a lot of the stuff I've done, especially in other sets, is placing background. So it was a lot of fun getting to be in charge of like 30 to 40 people and getting them to scream their hearts out for an hour and then just getting to place what we can do to make this scene more and more chaotic. Uh, another scene we had was just, uh, especially the scene at the beginning we have that kicks everything off. There's this one scene that it's more emotional. It starts the story. We had um, a lot of special effects we had to do with like torches and everything, which uh, Daniel Blisman did a fantastic do job with his production design with getting these torches to be like actually like combustible flames that we we're able to work with while also doing that safely, but also still managing everything. But I mean, I was really happy for every scene we filmed. And I was really proud of the job our crew did on that one. So helping create a riot, were there any uh, struggles of, you know, managing people where they're yelling, they're pushing? What do you see was, was important for you to do during that time? I mean, well, the important thing about a riot is to make it look like it's disorganized, but it's actually organized. So, I mean, one of the big things you do is, you know, you just separate all the groups and kind of, you know, like uh, one thing I do would be like, you know, if your birthday is from like January to March, you'll say this scene. And then from April to September, you say like this scene so that way, whenever you're doing, you don't have to be like, you say this, you say this, you say this. And then you have them spread out throughout the crowd. So then you have five or six different groups of people saying different things. So on camera, it looks disorganized, but also like once you're done, you know, you can say reset and then everyone's ready for it. Everyone's ready to be back in the action. Really the main thing with controlling the mob was just like, we had a really great group of background actors that were just really into it. So the only thing would be like, you know, once you're cut, you'd be like, all right, we're done with the scene, but everyone was so in character and in motion that it would take, you know, maybe like 30 seconds or a minute where, you know, you'd just be like, okay, we're cut and people would still be like, still giving 110% or like, we love that, but save that for the next take. So, you know, just getting people to go back into the forward motion, everything. But besides that, you know, just also making sure that we make it look like an angry mob, but also we're still keeping it safe. Like we don't want anyone to be like pushing to anyone too much. We don't have to worry about anyone falling down. So making it look like it's disorganized, but it's actually organized and it's still safe and you can still see that final result in camera. So just so you know, no extras were harmed. I mean, I joked about it earlier, but you know, no extras are harmed in any scene at all because of Christian's mindset and also the safety reasons as well. Uh, okay, so this is the hardest question. Uh, other than me, which is definitely your favorite, I know, no question oh, about course. it. Yeah. Who would be the next favorite person that you love working on set? Oh, that's a tough one. I guess probably my, my go-to answer would have to be either Ruthie, uh, who is our fearless director, because, you know, my main job was, you know, Ruthie was in charge of kind of the creative portion of filming the process and everything. And then I was, you know, more being in charge of the logistics and crew, but it was a pleasure getting to work with her because it was a 
just seeing how her process works and seeing that creative vision unfold, she was really good. I'd also have to give props to Rebecca Stoller, who is my second second and second AD. She was my right-hand man. I have a million tests I have to do, but if I had anything important I had to delegate, it was really great to know I had somebody that I could count on that could be in my corner that could be like, I can't do this personally, can you do this? She also was a, a second second, her job was also helping place with the background, so she also did a lot of help with that crowded scene but it's just nice to have uh, one or two people that you know you can count on that it's like I need to focus on this can you take care of this and she was always she gave 110 percent and she got everything taken care of I needed I she was fantastic if you ever need a good second or second second she's fantastic I would agree Rebecca and definitely Ruthie as well so uh, again I, I obviously I'm, I'm biased because again I, I love that week it's a great week was there any fond memories that you had uh, of that week yeah, I had, a, I had a lot of fond memories that, I mean, just really one of the main things with working with Paul and everything was like, you know, most of the crew was my friends or became my friends by the end of it. So, you know, one of the things I really do love about making movies is just like, I'm getting, I'm like helping create art, but I'm also spending time with my friends. So really every day on set is great. If I had to choose any specific highlights besides, you know, just the entire process in and of itself, one of my favorite memories was um, after lunch on the last day we had, we was um, we were a little behind. It was like 20 degrees, if I remember correctly, yeah, or very something cold. very cold <laughs> like that. So I gave a speech at the the end of the last day to kind of rally the troops, and everyone really gravitated around that. And then we had a, a lot of positive feedback from our actors and crew. Everyone just kind of really giving our all. And then after lunch, you could tell morale was really high, and we were really able to just knock out this last scene we had filmed. And that was just one of my highlights, not just of the show, but just of any set I've worked on in my entire film career. And the, the amazing part with, with Paul is that most of the crew were under 25 years old. Uh, and just, but you would not tell, you could not tell that they were that young. Honestly, you're definitely more mature beyond your years. Uh, Ruthie, definitely, Rebecca, uh, all, everyone else, and Daniel. Uh, but, and, and, but it was brought to a different level of professionalism, which again, you could tell, you, you would think we spent millions and millions of dollars, but it's because we have crew members like Christian that gave so much more of what, what they, a part of who they are. And that shows a lot about who their integrity and who their character is as well. So now you have these millions of viewers. Millions. Is there anything you want to say to your millions of adoring fans out there, millions of viewers just waiting to hear your next words? Millions of viewers. Wait, when do we get I, millions? I, I, would, I would say billions. Sorry, billions. I'm sorry. I, are, I mean, are they I, your viewers, though? Uh, they're all their viewers of everything, right? So they're, they're watching you. They're, it's viral, of course. Oh, well, it's viral. <laughs> then I guess the only thing you can say is follow me on Instagram or Facebook at probably Christian Kramer. And you never know what project's going to be coming next. Um, if I have to say anything else, though, I mean, just uh, thank you so much for uh, giving up your time and watching this video. And I hope you really enjoy uh, Paul the Last Apostle. Well, Christian, thanks again. It's my pleasure. Great work as well. Christian Kramer again, my first AD on uh, Paul Last Apostle. Okay, Christian, I got you recorded now. We got to see. Oh, wait. Uh, do, you, do you need a, a trumpet fanfare? I can get my, my trumpet real quick. I, my piano. You can never have too many trumpets. You can never have too many trumpets. Well, I, you know, I, I said trumpet. I actually have a saxophone. Is that okay? It could be more of a jazz riff than a... Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you need a drum roll? I can find something yeah. I can do a drum roll on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, I think that'll work. I think that'll work. Cool. All right. And let me just... The anticipation is just building. I'm, I don't know what to do with myself. Do I get popcorn? I know. I'm, 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 I'm pretty good at this. I'm, I'm all about the theatrics of it. <laughs> you really didn't have to log off, did you? You just wanted to, just for, you know, for added effect. <laughs> yeah, for posterity. So, I mean, it's, it's work, though. The anticipation is killing you. So. It, it, it is. It's, yeah. It is. Oh, no. Oh, oh no, it's Oscar that. showing. That's not oh. right. Oscar, you're stealing my thunder. He stole your thunder. <laughs> hey, Chris, you made it. Wow, wow. Doing it. Dun, 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 dun. I know, I'm glad, glad you're all here to witness it. So, um, <laughs> uh, 